For 15 years, one building has ruled the sky, the Burj Khalifa. 828 meters of concrete, steel, and glass has been the undisputed champion since 2010. Saudi Arabia tried to knock it off the top once already. Jeddah Tower was launched as the world's first kilometer-tall skyscraper. Then politics, arrests, and a seven-year freeze left it as a concrete stump in the desert. Now, construction is back. The tower has climbed past roughly 75 floors, and it's aiming to open around 2028, finally tall enough to push Burj Khalifa into second place. This is the race for the world's tallest building, Dubai's reigning champion versus Saudi Arabia's resurrected challenger. On January 4, 2010, after six years of construction, Dubai switched on about 10,000 fireworks and unveiled a new world record. Everyone expected the tower to open as Burj Dubai, Burj meaning tower, until Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum stepped up to the microphone and quietly changed history. In the middle of the ceremony, he renamed it Burj Khalifa, thanking the UAE president whose bailout kept Dubai's finances and this tower from collapsing during the 2008 crisis. At 828 meters, with 163 occupied floors, Burj Khalifa didn't just edge past the previous record holder, Taipei 101. It blew straight through it, roughly 320 meters taller and about 60% higher than the Taiwanese tower. Underneath the glass and fireworks, the engineering was just as aggressive. The tower sits on a 3.7 meter thick piled raft, supported by around 190 to 200 board piles, extending more than 40 meters into the ground to reach competent rock. Above that, a Y-shaped floor plan and a buttressed core, a hexagonal concrete core braced by three wings, let the building resist enormous wind loads without needing a huge steel frame or a massive tuned mass damper at the top. In total, engineers poured on the order of 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and tens of thousands of tons of steel to get it to full height. By the mid-2010s, the tower decks alone were drawing millions of visitors a year, and more recent estimates suggest Burj Khalifa and its surroundings now attract on the order of 15 to 17 million people annually. That's a huge return on a 1.5 billion USD construction bill, especially when you factor in hotel rooms, apartments, offices, and high-end retail. But the impact was symbolic. Before 2010, Dubai was famous for indoor ski slopes and artificial islands. After Burj Khalifa, it became shorthand for extreme ambition. The tower started appearing in Hollywood action scenes, architectural lectures, and pitch desks from Lagos to Jakarta. Proof that if you put a record breaker in the middle of a desert, the world will come to you. And for 15 years, nobody has managed to take that trophy away from Dubai. But Saudi Arabia has been planning its move for a long time. Just over a year after Burj Khalifa opened, it unveiled plans for something even more audacious. Jeddah Tower originally Kingdom Tower, a skyscraper designed to break not just Dubai's record, but a psychological barrier as well. On paper, it's simple. Build the world's first one-kilometer-tall building. Officially, the design is at least 1,008 meters. The exact figure is deliberately kept vague, just as it was with Burj Khalifa. But we know it will stand roughly 170 to 180 meters taller than today's champion. That's around three times the height of the Eiffel Tower, and easily enough to reset every tall building ranking on Earth. It wouldn't stand alone, either. Jeddah Tower is the anchor for Jeddah Economic City, a new waterfront district on the Red Sea that Saudi Arabia is pitching as a $20 to $26 billion investment once you include the tower and surrounding infrastructure. Early on, the tower itself was talked about at roughly $1.2 billion, but Prince Al-Walid now says the total bill will be close to 100 billion reals, around 26 billion U.S. dollars, to finish. To pull this off, the developers went back to a familiar name, Adrian Smith, the architect behind Burj Khalifa. His team at Adrian Smith plus Gordon Gill took Dubai's buttress core idea and pushed it even further into a three-petal plan inspired by the folded fronds of a desert plant. The tower tapers dramatically as it rises, with three wings buttressing a central hexagonal core to disrupt wind vortices and shed lateral loads. But the real story starts below ground. Jeddah sits on softer, more complex soils than Dubai, right next to the Red Sea. 
To carry a structure approaching a million tons, engineers drove around 270 board piles as deep as 105 to 110 meters into the ground, more than twice the depth of Burj Khalifa's foundation piles, and capped them with a concrete raft roughly 90 meters across. Once the foundations passed testing, the core began to climb. Construction officially started in 2013, and for a few years, the progress looked impressive. By early 2018, the tower had reached about 63 floors, roughly 250 to 300 meters above the desert. Then suddenly, everything stopped. The reasons weren't technical, they were political. In late 2017, Saudi Arabia launched a sweeping anti-corruption purge. Among the hundreds of businessmen and royals attained were Prince Alwaleed bin Talal, the billionaire behind Kingdom Holding, and Bakir bin Laden, then chairman of Saudi bin Laden Group, the main contractor on the project. From January 2018 to early 2025, no new concrete went into the tower. The partially built core stood exposed to sun, sand, and speculation. From the outside, it looked like Jeddah Tower had quietly joined the long list of canceled megaprojects and Dubai kept the crown simply because its only serious challenger had stalled. Then, the story flipped again. In 2003 to 2024, the developer issued new tenders, and Saudi bin Laden Group was formally reappointed under a fresh contract worth around 1.9 billion USD, with a 42-month schedule to complete the structure. Construction officially restarted in early 2025 with new management support from international firms and a target completion date around 2028, lining the project up neatly with Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 timeline. Recent site reports and compiled photo evidence suggest the core has now passed around 75 floors as of late 2025, with the project team aiming to average roughly one new floor every three to four days as work ramps up. And the higher it goes, the harder the engineering gets. Jeddah Tower will need concrete pumped higher than Burj Khalifa's 606-meter world record using chilled, low-permeability mixes designed to cope with heat and saline groundwater. Above that, you hit the limits of vertical transport. Traditional steel elevator ropes become too heavy long before you reach a kilometer. Jeddah Tower's solution is Cone's Ultra Rope carbon fiber hoisting belts that are far lighter, allowing elevator runs of 600 to 1,000 meters and cutting energy use in the process. Multiple elevator zones, sky lobbies, and transfer floors are stitched together around this system to move people up and down the building at speed. But Jeddah isn't the only city trying to grab that crown. Other cities have already tried to knock Dubai off the top, and some have quietly stepped back from the fight. Back in 2016, when Jeddah's tower core was rising out of the sand, Dubai launched a counter move, Dubai Creek Tower. Designed by Santiago Calatrava, it's more cable-stayed mast than conventional skyscraper. A slender needle supported by a web of stays, intended as the centerpiece of the Dubai Creek Harbor District. Early statements talked about a minimum height of 1,300 meters, easily enough to beat both Burj Khalifa and a completed Jeddah Tower. Foundations were poured after work began in late 2016, and a huge pile cap now sits on the site. But when COVID hit in 2020, construction was paused, and it never really restarted. Then, in February 2024, Imar's founder quietly confirmed the twist. The tower had been redesigned to be shorter than Burj Khalifa. Kuwait, meanwhile, has been quietly sketching its own shot at the crown. Burj Mubarak al-Kabir, part of the vast Madinat al-Harir, or Silk City project. The concept calls for a 1,001-meter, 234-story mixed use tower exactly one meter taller than Jeddah's symbolic kilometer, a deliberate nod to 1,001 nights. On paper, it anchors a 250-square-kilometer new city meant to diversify Kuwait's oil-dependent economy. In reality, Silk City has been talked about for years, and no construction has started on the tower itself. Timelines now show a start 2025+, plus and completion 2040+, plus more a statement of intent than an active race. And then there's the wild card, Rise Tower in Riyadh. In 2025, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund invented firms to bid on a project management contract for a two-kilometer tall skyscraper in a new North Pole business district on the edge of the capital with Foster Plus partners linked to the design. If it ever gets built at that height, it would be roughly twice as tall as Burj Khalifa and leave even Jeddah Tower looking small. Right now, though, it's a project that exists in tender documents in glossy renders, not in concrete or steel.
But why does the title of World's Tallest matter so much in the first place? When the Empire State Building opened in 1931, in the middle of the Great Depression, it was a statement that the United States still intended to build big and look ahead, even as the economy collapsed around it. In the 1990s, the Petronas Towers did the same thing for Malaysia. Suddenly, Kuala Lumpur skyline was on front pages worldwide, and the towers became shorthand for the country's modern, outward-looking ambitions. Taipei 101 sent a similar message in the 2000s. Taiwan wasn't just a manufacturing hub, it was capable of high-end engineering and complex seismic design in one of the world's most active earthquake zones. Burj Khalifa then took that playbook and supercharged it, repositioning Dubai from a desert curiosity with some wild projects to a global icon that now draws around 17 million visitors a year, generating an estimated 600 million USD in ticket revenue from the tower alone. That's before you count the hotels, malls, and premium real estate that exists purely because people want to be near it. Saudi Arabia is now trying to repeat that play at a different scale. Jeddah Tower isn't being built in isolation. So where does the race actually stand right now? As of late 2025, the current scoreboard looks like this. Burj Khalifa, Dubai. 828 meters, 163 floors, world champion since 2010. Merdeka 118, Kuala Lumpur. About 679 meters, 118 floors, officially the second tallest completed building on Earth. Shanghai Tower, China. 632 meters, 128 floors, still the tallest in China and third in the world. Jeddah Tower is now the clear frontrunner among projects under construction. After a seven-year pause, work formally restarted in early 2025. Recent reports and construction photos put the core at around the 75th floor as of November 2025, with the goal of topping out around 1,000 meters and opening near August 2028 as the center of Jeddah Economic City. But will they actually finish? Arguments in favor are strong. The structure is already well out of the ground, the design has been revalidated, new contracts worth nearly 2 billion USD have been let, and it's now framed as part of Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 strategy. But there are still risks. Mile-high class projects live or die on financing and confidence. Another oil price shock, regional instability, or a prolonged global downturn could slow work again. For now, Jeddah Tower is the only kilometer-class project that's actually climbing. As new floors go up, contracts get signed or delayed, and timelines shift. We'll keep following its progress in the rest of this height race right here on Mega Builds. Who do you think will hold the title in 2035? Dubai, Jeddah, Kuwait, China, or a city we haven't even mentioned yet? Let us know in the comments. Hit like if you enjoyed this deep dive. Subscribe to Mega Builds for more stories behind the world's biggest and most ambitious projects. Thank you for watching it, and see you in the next one.